Excellencies, Mrs. Aoun, Reverend Father, Dean Asaf, distinguished speakers, um, ladies and gentlemen. I'd also like to thank uh, USIC for arranging such an amazing event and uh, such quality uh, attendance and for hosting me. I'd like to thank my mother um, before I start my speech because my mother came from a generation that couldn't uh, be who they are. Uh, my mother is Lebanese and she studied um, education psychology in the AUB. She uh, was the first, she, she founded the first woman, the first um, place for the blind here uh, in Lebanon in the 50s. Um, but unfor well, fortunately uh, for us as a family, she sacrificed her dream for her family. But I carried her dream. So my name is Dina Psesu. And often when we are asked uh, who we are, we say, we talk about what we do. And we forget, actually, what we do takes us away from, from who we are. So I will briefly talk about who I am. My father is Palestinian, and my mother is Lebanese. But when I'm asked about where I am from, I usually tell people, how long do you have? Because I'm Palestinian. I'm Lebanese, I grew up in Bahrain, and I'm a Bahraini citizen. I spent much of my childhood here in Lebanon, and I left my heart here in Lebanon. Um, I came to the AUB during the Civil War, and please, let's not get engaged in a math exercise to calculate my age. <laughs> I then went to the US and did my um, Georgetown and, and Duke University degree and became a, a US citizen. I then became a banker and moved to Switzerland. I got a divorce and I have a 35 year career in banking. So I collected passports like people collect stamps. But I am a citizen of the world, and I would like to share with you a line that I wrote in a poem, which says, um, But that definitely also applies to my Lebanese half and to all of the Lebanese that are abroad and whose heart is here in Lebanon. So I'm a single mother of two amazing young adult children, Omar and Noor. I'm very proud of them. And with all the achievements that I've made, Omar and Noor are my biggest achievement. So I'm a career woman with a 35 year um, experience in banking. I have uh, been quite successful in the career that I led. But then th there came a point where I decided that I must do something better in my life than what I began to see as a job without a soul. So I decided to give back and I found it challenge to change. Challenge to change for me was a platform which aimed to help women transform their challenges into change opportunities. So Challenge to Change is a non-profit association registered in Switzerland. It's the first platform in the Arab world that focuses on the emotional and inner well-being for Arab women to be the best version of, the, of themselves and to become the women who achieve their full potential and who manage to overcome their barriers from within. Most empowerment programs focus on education, vocation, profession. But how can we empower the limbs when the backbone is weak? How can a woman who has a doctor's degree uh, from a university succeed when she doesn't have confidence in herself, when she can't stand up for herself, when she can't say no? So we aim at reinforcing the backbone for women, especially for young women from marginalized areas, so that they can have a strong backbone, so they can walk with their limbs and fly with their wings. 
I've always been inspired by a quote by Gandhi, and this quote is actually the cornerstone of Challenge to Change. Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in your life. And this is the cornerstone of Challenge to Change, to see change in our communities, with our families, in our jobs, in our society, we must change ourselves. We must look at the circumstances around us. If there are things that we cannot change, then we have to accept them and work through them. If there are opportunities or circumstances that we can change, then we have to have the courage to stand up and to change them. But we also need to know the difference between what we can and cannot change. We need to overcome our challenges to see that these challenges are opportunities for growth. They're opportunities for development and they're opportunities for us to really realize who we want to be. Change will come. But it might not come at the speed we want. Sometimes it can, sometimes it cannot. Challenge to change is based on what we say the four E's. Um, engage, empower, educate, employ. We believe that we cannot um, have a woman fulfill her true potential if she doesn't close a full circle. If she engages without education, she's done nothing. If she studies, sorry, in, if she engages without being empowered, then she's done nothing. Is she empowered? but she's not educated in society where she can contribute, then she's also done nothing. And if she's educated but cannot put that education to use in a society, then she's also done nothing. So our programs aim at doing these four things, engage, empower, educate, and employ. Now our, our programs aim to create, uh, Challenge to Change is a platform which aims to, change, to, to create a community where women can find a safe space, a support, a sisterhood, a, a large family where they feel that they can belong and they can share and that they can get strength from each other. One of our programs is the Big Sister, Little Sister. It's a very successful program. We have leading women uh, from various walks of life and actually from all over the world who adopt little sisters. These little sisters are often from marginalized areas, from Palestine and Lebanon. And these little sisters um, are from a very, very critical age, between 17 and 25. This age is the age where the rest of their life is decided. So they need good advice. Um, and this advice should come from a neutral, warm big sister who accepts them, who takes them, who advises them without telling them what to do, and who does not judge them. So this program has been very successful. Um, we've seen um, real growth and impact on the lives of these girls. Some of them are now on scholarships. Some of them have taken jobs in the countries where they're from. And some of them are just simply more confident and happy and positive women. Then we have group mentoring, uh, which helps create the women um, where they have safe uh, places where they can share their experiences, and we also have work readiness where we help these women prepare themselves uh, for the workplace. Um, our beneficiaries are women from Palestine and Lebanon, often from marginalized areas, and we've empowered 650 women. We aim to empower 2,000 this year and 5,000 by the end of next year. I'll end with this quote from the Holy Bible, which says, the truth shall set you free. And we must speak our truth. So I'm asking you all to join us and to be the change that you want to see in your life. Thank you.